Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So the Proud Boys seditious conspiracy trial was supposed to end last month, the end of February, but the prosecution is still calling witnesses. They're still presenting evidence. It's like a marathon trial. Um, it's now estimated to end in April. So here's what's been going down. Proud Boys member Jeremy Bertino, you guys might remember he took a plea deal and a cooperation deal. He testified for five full days and that included cross-examination. As I mentioned previously, Bertino conceded that he wasn't aware of an explicit plan to attack the Capitol, but he told the jury that based on ongoing conversations within the group, they all knew that the mission was to stop Joe Biden from becoming the president. And Bertino said, quote, I expected them to save the country by any means necessary, up to and including violence. So this is really no different than what took place in the Oath Keepers trial. I mean, they didn't have written explicit evidence in that trial either. But as we know, many of the defendants in those two trials were convicted of seditious conspiracy. And what the prosecutors didn't have in the Oath Keepers trial was a witness like Bertino. I mean, this guy has admitted under oath that the Proud Boys denied the existence of a plan to, quote, shape things so we looked innocent. Bertino said, quote, that's what we were putting out to everyone. But looking back at it, I know that's not true. And this was confirmed with messages sent by defendant Joe Biggs. Biggs was urging other members to use the cover story that the Proud Boys were just trying to protect Trump supporters from the far left and the, quote, commies. And Bertino admitted that their former chairman, Enrique Tarrio, was well known to keep plans to himself. And he also told the jury, quote, it was common knowledge that if everything else failed, there was no other option than to go into a civil war, a revolution. This was a common topic of conversation in all of the chats I was in. In fact, the jury heard a January 4th audio message uh, that Bertino left for other Proud Boys leaders. And he said in this message, quote, Dude, this is where the rubber meets the road. Now, does the military and the National Guard fuck up Trump supporters or do they fuck up Antifa? I guess that's what we are going to see. So they fully anticipated and planned for violence on January 6th. And the prosecutor laid out the case for duplicity on Tario's part. So, for example, they showed that he testified before the January 6th Select Committee and he told them, oh, if I was there, you know, 100 percent, none of my guys would have been arrested. But he sent messages in December of 2020 to his members stating, quote, I want them to be fearful. And in a January 4th text message that Tario sent to his co-defendant, Joe Biggs, Tario told him that on January 6th, quote, whatever happens, make it a spectacle. So Tario, as you guys know, he was arrested on January 4th, and he was told to stay away from D.C. So he was sending marching orders to his troops, and he sent that message to Biggs as he was being pulled over by the police to be arrested. And his troops were very angry at the police by this point. Group messages show they started to turn on the cops after Bertino was stabbed and hospitalized. That was at a Trump rally in December 2020. But then following Tario's arrest, they basically declared war on the police. In late December, after a member noted that there could be a riot on January 6th, Bertino wrote back, quote, just let it happen. Maybe it's the shot heard round the world and the normies will fuck up the cops. And then when the group discovered that Tario was going to be arrested, Bertino wrote, quote, hashtag fuck the blue. And Pennsylvania Proud Boys leader John Stewart, not that John Stewart, um, he replied, quote, agree, they chose their fucking side, so let's get this done. And then the jury also got to see the video of the meeting that Tario had with Oath Keepers founder Elmer Stewart Rhodes. If you guys have been following all of this, you know what I'm talking about. This is the January 5th meeting that took place in an underground parking garage in D.C., and it was partially captured on video because there was a documentarian making a film about the Proud Boys. Well, one of the people who accompanied Rhodes to that meeting was heard on video, and this was played for the, the jury. He said, quote, 
it's inevitable what's going to happen. We've just got to do it as a team together, strong, hard, and fast. I am fighting so hard not to say that's what she said. Um, so Tario and Rhodes portion of that conversation wasn't recorded because they asked the documentarian to turn off the camera for some reason. Unfortunately, no one knows what that comment meant. You know, we, we don't even know who it was that said it. They haven't even named the person to my knowledge. And we still don't know why these two leaders, these two pro-Trump extremist leaders felt the need to meet in person at an underground parking garage the night before the Capitol was attacked. What we do know, though, that came out in this trial was that one of Tario's three girlfriends, um, they messaged with him in the days leading up to the attack. And this woman was joking about her concern that their son, not sure if they actually have a son together, or if she was just like, you know, pontificating about the future, but she said, oh, I'm worried my our son will grow up to be just like you. And then she said something to the effect of, you know, he's going to come to me one day and say, Mom, I'm going to go take the Capitol. Hmm. Where would she have gotten that idea that he would be just like his father? So in addition to all of this, the jury also got to hear and see that Taria was working behind the scenes with a D.C. police lieutenant a man named Shane Lamond. You guys may have heard that name before. I may have reported on it. He was in communication with Tario and it got him into hot water. He was suspended in early 2022. He's still under investigation. And Lamond apparently was sharing information with Tario about Antifa, where they were, what they were doing. Um, he gave him advanced warning that he was going to be arrested so he warned Tario all the way back on December 30th of 2020 that he was going to get arrested. So Tario is planning to call Lamond as a witness. And Tario's attorney is saying, you're going to laugh at this. Um, Tario's attorney is claiming that because Tario told Lamond all about what the Proud Boys were planning, all of their activities in advance, because he didn't tell Lamond that they were going to attack the Capitol, they must not have had a plan. <laughs> that is seriously their argument that because, you know, they told him everything. If they told him everything, why wouldn't they tell him that? <laughs> and as you guys might recall, the Proud Boys signaled early on that they were going to call Trump as a witness. Big's attorney recently said, quote, Donald Trump called on patriots to stop the steal. We're calling on Donald Trump to take the stand. And the Proud Boys were actually given the green light to do this. Trump claims that he will accept the subpoena. I'll believe it when I see it because this could be a very sticky wicket <laughs> for Trump, right? I mean, if he testifies and he claims he never told the Proud Boys to stop the certification of the vote, he's going to lose a ton of support from the far right. But he can't very well get on the witness stand and admit to encouraging them because then he gets indicted. Then he goes to prison. So I think Trump is going to Trump. I think he's going to fight this subpoena, even if he accepts the service of the document. Um, but anyway, guys, that's where it stands. I'll let you know what else I hear. This is going to go on for a while, apparently. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please donate. Please become a monthly supporter if you can. Truly appreciate all of you. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.